In this video, I'm going to show you how to add hover effects to your Figma prototype. Let's get started. So to get started, I'm opening up a Figma design file. Now, if you're fairly new to Figma, I have an entire playlist of tutorials, so I'll link that in the description below. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to add hover effects to your prototype. So to get started, I'm on a blank area in my Figma file, and I'm going to start off by clicking the letter A on my keyboard, and that will allow me to add a frame to the project. So I'm just going to create a fairly large rectangle on the page. Once I've added this particular element to the page, I can go to this panel on the right side and specify the exact width and height I want for this element. So this is going to be a fairly large button on the page just for demonstration purposes. So the next thing I'm going to do is add text to this button. So I'm going to click the letter T, which brings up my text tool, and I'm just going to write a call to action of subscribe. I'm going to place this element in the middle of the frame. Instead of it being 32, I'm going to increase the font size. So now we have the frame and the text for our button. The next thing I want to add is a background color for this frame. So I'm going to click the letter R for rectangle, and I'm going to add a rectangle that's the exact same size as the frame. For this rectangle, I want there to be a little bit of a curve radius. So over here in my panel, I'm just going to increase this to four. Then in my layer panel on the side, I'm going to click on that rectangle that I just created and I'm going to rename this layer as background. I also want this to be beneath the text, so I'm actually going to take that layer and click and drag it beneath that text layer. So now we have the initial state of our button defined, and next I'm going to create the hover state for it. So I'm just going to take this frame, and I'm going to click Command C and then Command V to paste it, and then it makes an identical frame right next to it. So for this frame, which will be the hover state for that button, I'm going to click on that background layer and I'm just going to modify the color of it. So over here we see fill and I'm going to change the fill of it to a light blue color. So now we have two states for our buttons. We have the initial state and then we have the hover state. So the next thing I want to do is actually add an animation so that way it transitions from the first state to the second state. So I'm going to go over to my prototype tab on the top right, and I'm going to click that initial frame. And once I select it, we see this little dot appears. And when I hover over that, it turns into a plus icon. So I can just take this plus icon and I can click and drag it over to the second frame because I wanted to transition from this state to the state. Once I do, some interaction details appears in this window. And right now the default property is on click, it wants to navigate to this frame, but I don't want it to be a click interaction, I want it to be the hover state. So I'm going to select on click, and then I'm going to select while hovering. So now this is saying that while hovering, I want to navigate to this other frame. So to actually see our prototype, I can click this play button in the top right. So once I do, it opens up the prototype in a new tab, and we see the button on the page, and when I hover over it, we can see that it goes to the hover state. So now we know that this is working. However, there's not any kind of transition between the two states. It just goes from the gray state, the initial state, to the hover state without any kind of smooth transition. So next, I'm going to add a transition to my prototype. So I'm going to go over to this section under animation, and instead of it being instant, I'm going to switch it to Smart Animate, which will allow the animation to easily transition from one state to another. And once I do, some other properties become available. So I can change the curve of it. Instead of it being Ease Out, I can change it to Ease In Out or other kinds of curves. I'm going to switch it to Ease In and Out. And then you can also specify the duration. Right now it's set to 300 milliseconds. So now let's go to our prototype and see how it looks. I hover over that button and now it smoothly transitions from gray to blue and then from blue to gray. So this is a really simple hover effect that you can add to your project. But next I'm going to make it a little bit more dynamic. So I'm going to go back to my design tab 
and I'm going to make some modifications. So now, for the hover state, instead of just changing the background from gray to blue, I want there to be a circle in the background that kind of expands and overtakes the button with the blue color. So first, I'm going to select this background color, and I'm going to change the fill of it to match the original state. So I'm going to use this color picker and then pick this color gray, so that way it matches the initial state. Next, for this frame two, I'm going to add an ellipse to the page. So you can add a circle by clicking the O key, and I'm going to create a very large circle on the page. So I'm going to center align it so it's on top of that frame two. Then I'm going to change the fill of this to the initial blue color that I want to add for my project. So now it is that bright blue color. But right now it's covering the text, which was the same issue that we had before. So I'm going to go over to this frame two. I'm going to rename this layer as hover circle, and I'm going to move that beneath the text. So now we just see that blue color. So right now, if I go back to the prototype tab within Figma, it doesn't look like the prototype has changed at all because I'm just transitioning from the gray to the blue state. But I want there to be that circle pop effect. So going back within the design, I have to make a couple more modifications. Now, the way that Smart Animate works within Figma is that it looks at the layer names in your project. And so it looks at the layers in frame one, and then it looks at the layers in frame two, and then it determines how it changes its appearance from one state to another. So right now in frame two, I have this hover circle, which is this blue background color, but I don't have that layer in frame one. So with this frame selected, I'm going to copy it from frame two, and I'm going to paste it in frame one. So now we have the blue circle in frame one. So next I'm going to take that layer and again, drag it beneath that text layer. Next, I have to add different properties to the circle layer so that way it can easily transition from frame one to frame two. So in this panel on the side, I can modify its specifications. So here I'm going to set the width of it to one and the height of it to one, which will make it a very small circle on the page. And then to ensure that it is in the center of the button, I'm going to center align it horizontally and vertically. So now it's a very small dot on the page. And the last thing I'm going to do is actually change the fill of it. Instead of it being 100% opacity, I'm going to change this to zero. So that way initially it will have zero opacity and it will increase in size and then go to full opacity. So although we can't really see this hover circle layer on the page, it actually is on this frame one, and we have it in a completely different state for this frame two. So again, if I click on this play button, it will refresh the prototype. And now when I hover over it, we see the circle animation effect. So now we can see this blue circle increase in size. And when the user is not in the hover state, it shrinks back to its original size. Within Figma, you can add a lot of other kinds of interactions to your prototype. So if I go back to my prototype tab, under interactions, I can click on this plus. You can add various kinds of interactions to your prototype. Since we're already using while hovering, we can't use that again, but they have on drag, while pressing, mouse enter, mouse leave, and other kinds of elements. For the actual animation feature, you can add different kinds of curves and durations. So there you go. That's how I created this hover effect using Figma. Please let me know if you have any questions on the topic and subscribe to stay up to date with my latest content. Thanks for watching.